Thomas Moore, a minerals and energy economist at National Australia Bank. He joins us from uh, Melbourne, rather. Ben, oil finding it rather hard to break through the uh, technical resistance level of $80 a barrel. What will take it there? What's needed? Oh, look, I think that in the last couple of weeks, the rally in the oil price seems to be largely related to the, the drawdowns in oil product supply. Um, the weekly data from the US EIA is obviously quite important for these markets. Uh, and, and, it, and, it's, and it seems that from here, investors are expecting further drawdowns, especially in distillate products, which are coming off uh, sort of record high levels. Um, so that's quite important. Uh, there, is, there is a big sort of disconnect in the market balance in the oil market at the moment, and that needs to be redressed in, before we get, get any further price momentum upwards uh, in, a, in a trend sense. How much of a drawdown? Because we had Sogjan saying oil could average 92 bucks a barrel in the fourth quarter of 2010. I mean, what's supporting your view? Uh, well, look, I think, I think at the moment, if you look at uh, the supply side and the demand side, firstly, we've got a supply overhang, and that's, that's well known in the market. Uh, but it seems to be that the demand outlook is the thing, the really big swing variable in the oil market at the moment. Uh, and, and at the moment, there, there are really big sort of uh, d impediments that exist in terms of recovery for global oil demand. Um, and if you look at the big developed economies, the US, UK, Eurozone, Japan, uh, it, does, it does seem that the demand over the next year is going to be quite slow and, and the recovery is going to be protracted rather than a quick sort of V-shaped one. And so, that, so if you couple that with the fact that we've got a the large supply overhang, it's difficult to see the oil price uh, sort of moving higher in a trend sense and in, as, an, as aggressively as, as that that you've mentioned. Ben, we can't let you go without getting your projections for oil. Uh, so look, uh, over over 2010, I'm, I'm expecting a, a gradual rise, consistent with you know what I've just said, uh, and and so in the, in the in the first quarter, I'm looking at oil around eighty dollars in quarterly average terms, and by the end of the year, moving upwards to the sort of sort of mid eighty dollar per barrel mark. Okay, looking at other commodities, copper prices at their highest in fifteen months. Are you liking copper? Can this rally continue? Uh, yeah, look, out of all the metals, the, the, the market for copper and the fundamentals in the copper market look to be the most supportive. Uh, on the LME, on, on warrant stocks uh, are lower, lower than sort of their long-term averages for copper. Uh, and you couple that with the fact that, you know, in China we've had very strong uh, imp uh, imports data for November uh, and very strong production data coming out of China in terms of domestic production means that apparent consumption uh, in emerging Asia and China being a good, ca good sort of benchmark for that has picked up noticeably in the last few months and that seems to be d driving a lot of the rally in the oil price uh, and, and re sort of reflecting that we've seen the differential between the Shanghai Futures Exchange copper price and the, and the LME copper price open up once again uh, and you know we're expecting some uh, restocking in the first quarter of next year, which is only going to give further sort of upward momentum to the to the copper price. Uh, as you indicated, investors banking on China's growth and demand. What are the chances the nation will disappoint? What's the risk of that happening? Yeah, I mean, look, I guess in some sense, the the decoupling theory that many were prophesizing before the financial crisis with China and, and the West, rest of the world um, has, has come true. And, and it seems that, you know, with the big slowing global demand, Chinese reoriented their production from, from their export sector to a domestically oriented production, um, given their big stimulus package. Uh, and, and I think from here, it, it definitely seems to work. And from here, it's, it's really difficult to come up with a plausible scenario for why Chinese demand growth would, would slow noticeably in the short term anyway. Um, so, that, so in terms of the growth outlook, there's not a great risk of China falling over in near term. Um, in metal markets especially, though, the big risk relates to domestic production. It, it does look like uh, a lot of the production facilities in China have switched back on now that prices have risen to um, make sort of production from their high cost facilities economically feasible. Um, and especially for, for metals such as aluminium, where we've seen increased production from China in November, um, it's, it's really a threat to prices given that there are very high uh, supplies of aluminium on world markets at the moment.
Ben, we have to live it there. Ben Westmore, minerals and energy economist at National Australia Bank in Melbourne.